Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Let's Code Duke Nukem, where we aim to recreate the original EGA action platformer, released in 1991. We've been able to shoot stuff for a while now, but destroying boxes and enemies does not look very satisfying yet. In today's episode, we will add the extra effects that are still missing. These are the dust clouds when landing on the floor, the puffs of smoke when stuff is destroyed, sparks flying around when the bolts hit the wall or enemies or whatever and uh, you know the bigger particle explosions that happen when you shoot a box uh, but will also take a, a few minutes to implement the floating score indicators when you pick up items uh, adding these things is a relatively small amount of work but will add a lot of action to the gameplay so uh, let's go ahead and do it so we'll just make a new package for the effects here and we'll just make them completely separate from the active tiles here so let's just call it, let's just start with the sparks. And these sparks have a X and a Y. And then let's spawn them at the X and the Y. And then let's make a render as well. And then we'll have a renderer, a renderer and the assets. And then let's figure out where the sparks are. Are they here in the object? They are probably in animation, although here are the dust clouds that we're going to do. Here is the smoke that we're going to do. But it looks like the sparks are definitely in a different file. So um, let's see if they are in anim. All right, let's see if the sparks are here. <clears throat> and here they are. So I'm guessing this starts at like 42. So and they are four frames, right? No more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this is eight frames. 42 for eight frames. Okay, so let's do a draw tile, assets, get anim. 42, X and Y. And then let's just give it a private static final int time to live or something that's eight frames and then let's uh <clears throat> let's just do a plus frame plus plus here let's keep track of the current frame private int frame equals zero and then for now let's just we need to remove the effect when it's done Okay, let's go to game state. Uh, let's go to the bolt even. So the bolt is gonna spawn the sparks when it hits the wall. So um, let's see, if it's solid, then we go to hit. And let's just see if it works. So I'll just do uh, state dot add effect or something. New sparks, X, Y. Then let's go to state, create method add effect effects.add sparks and then let's go make another list here and let's call it sparks and new array list all right and then we need to make a get sparks of course so where's the get spawns there's a get bolts here so i'm guessing we'll just do what you get <coughs> Get sparks, that's the one. Get sparks. And then uh, let's go ahead and render them. So we need to go to the GFX. And just like with the bolts, let's just get the sparks. And then the spark. Render. All right, so now each time a bolt hits the wall, we should add a, a spark. I'm going to rename that list once we have more effects. Okay. All right, so there we see an infinitely looping spark. So that's pretty nice. So all we need to do now is just remove it once it's done. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, so uh, let's remove it when it's done. So we'll do... Um, 
I guess here in the update list, we'll just do the same. Um, so we'll just iterate the bolts and then we'll iterate the sparks and we'll remove sparks that are done. Sparks effects iterator. Let's rename it. Well, this has more stuff. Sparks effect is effects iterator next. And then if it's done, then just remove it. Don't need to update it. And then here we can just return frame is greater than the time to live. We are doing this percent thing here. So there is no need to do that anymore. So now it wraps around to null to zero, I mean, and then the is done never fires. But here now you can see. All right, so we do see some added noise there. Which is a bit uh, weird. If you look at the graphic, did I count the amount of frames correctly? So let's go back to the spark, because I said it has eight frames. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's probably just six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. It's probably just six frames. I'm not sure what these two frames are here. So let's go ahead with six frames rather than eight in our time to live. I'm guessing I should not update this frame here. I'm guessing I should just do after we draw it. All right, and then we have to do probably do frame greater than or equal to time to live, and then we should be fine because we're zero based, right? Frame zero. So if we have six frames, then the sixth doesn't count. And then finally, we have a nice working spark. Okay. I like that. <clears throat> and then uh, let's go ahead and add the dust cloud that uh, happens when Duke lands on the floor. So let's copy over the spark. Uh, no, let's... Um, Let's rename this class to an effect. Okay. And then what we should do is we'll have a base tile. We're going to do it kind of similar to the items, right? We're going to have a super class which holds most of the information. And then we're going to make some subclasses that give us the details. So let's just give it a tile index and let's give it a, I don't know, a time to live. And then here, tile index time to live. And then we can just specify this stuff. Then the in render can just do tile index plus the frame, frame plus plus, and then the is done is frame greater than or equal to the time to live. And then this can be an abstract class. All right, and then we can make a public class sparks that extends the effect. And the sparks constructor can go super x, y, 42, six frames, public. Okay, and then let's go back to the game state. <coughs> And then let's, this needs to be a public abstract class so that the game state can see it. Let's rename this guy to effects. All right. Yep, yeah, that's pretty cool. Then this time to live can go. And then we have the sparks and then let's go ahead and add our dust cloud. Now the dust cloud is actually not in the anim PNG, but it's in the object PNG. And that's this guy here, Sprite 19. Sprite 19. 
and it's four frames. So, um, yeah, I guess we just have to update the, the render function. Public, uh, sorry, here. Render, renderer, draw tile, assets, get object. What did we say, 18? 19, I think we said. 19, 4, X, Y. Oh, 19 plus frame, X, Y. Frame plus plus. All right, and the dust cloud should spawn each time Duke um, tile index, I guess. We'll see if we can make this a bit nicer. But let's first make Duke spawn the dust cloud when he lands. So let's find the land function in Duke. So where is land? Here. And then if we were falling or jumping then we should go standing and then here we should go game state dot spawn or add effect new dust cloud x y so what we need to do for that is have the land method in the active land this guy needs to have the game state all right, so that means that we need to fix this move vertically stuff to uh, take in the game state rather than the level. So I guess we should just do that. Game state, state. Here, state, get level. And then here, land. Let's pass in the game state game state and then here game state state then here this state or this state and then state dot add effect new this cloud and then this should take in an effect effect And then Duke add effect, and then why Duke effects effect is not an enclosing class. Public class this cloud extend effect public aesthetic class. And this should also be a public aesthetic class. And then we need to make these protected. All right, and then this should be fine. Yep. All right. Uh, game state state. Move vertically state. And then what is this? If we're oh yeah, this should be a new sparks. Yep, because we were introducing these subclasses. Yeah, and we'll just fix compile errors. There we go. All right. So now we can see the dust cloud spawning, but it spawns, of course, in Duke's uh, center because of his X, Y. So we need to offset the dust cloud a little bit. Um, so we'll just add the tile size to it. So let's go ahead and let's add Y plus the tile size. If we want to be really neat we should probably add duke's height and then subtract the tile size from it but um yeah we can see the dust cloud when duke lands spawn so that's pretty cool okay uh next effect that we have is the uh is a little smoke smoke puff puff of smoke which is basically kind of like the dust cloud as well because it's in the object PNG, it's this this one here, that's 34. 
So at 34, we have smoke. Smoke, 34, and that's also four frames. Um, and now we don't have any ways to spawn the smoke because we don't have any actors that spawn smoke when they die or whatever. So let's, um, let's just spawn smoke when we jump. Uh, I will just spawn at each frame. Why not? Get effects, add new smoke effect, X, Y. So now Duke will be smoking. All right. Yeah, so that's the smoke effect. So that's pretty sweet. So that works, let's remove that. We'll add the smoke effect as soon as we have an actor that does it, but it's nice to have the effect in here. Um, <clears throat> the last effect that we need to add, I think the only one that we're missing is uh, is the, the explosion with like the particles and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and, and try to uh, to add those. So the particles in Duke are four of those little thingies that fly out in each direction. So if we go back to the object, then we have these four particles here. So I think what we'll do is we will first create a effect that is a single particle <clears throat> that uh, does nothing really. So, okay, let's go ahead and, and do it. So first off though, the default should probably be object so um, let's just go ahead here to get object. And then the only guy that should override it is the sparks because that sparks goes into anim. That's the only one. The rest all sits in object. So this should be get anim. And then the other two can just be default. So this makes a bit more sense to me. All right, so let's create a particle public static class particle. And then we have public a particle int x int y int, I don't know, uh, offset. So the offset, what I mean by that is we have four here. So we can have zero, one, two, three, or zero, one, two, or three. So tile index one, super x, y, one plus the offset. And the time to live is, uh, I don't know, let's do two seconds for now, 32 frames. All right. And now when we destroy a box, we should spawn, we should spawn these particles. So state, add a new particle x y and then let's have no offset so we'll spawn the same color here and then let's see what happens when we shoot a box all right mess that up royally because it shouldn't animate <clears throat> um so I think particles should, um, yeah, because we have a time to live and then there's a frame. So let's just override the render method here for now. Draw tile, renderer, get draw tile, uh, assets, sorry, assets, get object, tile index plus the offset here. Uh, so just this tile index, X and Y. So we still need to update the frame here, but since we're not using the frame to draw it, this should be fine. All right. And what this guy should also do is increase the Y variable. It needs to fall down because these particles have a little bit of weight to them. Okay. So that's a bit slow, but uh, it works. 
and uh, looks like we still have the ordering a bit uh, messed up here. I think these effects should be rendered at very last. So let's just have these bolts and sparks and effects rendered at the very end. So let's rename this to effect. So they're in front of everything else. All right, so now let's give it this guy a random, um, a random direction. Uh, so what we'll do here is we'll create a static method, um, public static void main uh, create particle. And then let's just pass in the game state and the X and Y origins. And then we're going to add in four. So let's start, in, start with offset zero, offset less than four, offset plus plus. And then we can say state dot get effects add new particle and then x y offset. And then let's give each particle some sort of velocity. And I'm guessing what we can do is we can just create the velocities here. So private int velocity x and y. And then here we can just say y plus equals velocity y. And the x plus equals the velocity x. I'm guessing we should do that here. And then when we're done, we can increment the velocity y by one to simulate some gravity. And then here we can velocity x equals math dot random times four minus eight so that we can go in both directions, left and right. And the same goes with the velocity y. And we should cast this back to an integer All right, so this probably will look nothing like the original, but we should see some stuff flying in all directions. All right, that's just one because we are still using the old, so we need to use this create particles here. So let's go back to box and then we can do particle dot create particles, pass in the game state and our X and Y. <clears throat> and this should give us four particles flying in all kinds of directions. Okay, everything went to the left. Okay, everything is keep flying to the left. So, and everything goes up as well. And that's probably because I'm doing something weird with the minus stuff. So what we should do is not times four minus eight. So we want we want a value between minus four and plus four. So that's eight possible values. And then we want to subtract four. So I did flip it around. So now we should see some more randomized directions. Hopefully. Yep. Yeah. Now this is nothing like the original. In the original, they just have, there's less random noise to it. Um, but uh, I'm liking this. We could uh, go ahead and try and emulate the original as much as possible. But uh, you know, it's the it's the thought that counts, you know. Alright, so I think that is a very nice way to end this episode. We've added some special effects. Uh, oh, wait, we have one more to go. Let's just go ahead and do it real quick. We still have a score to show when we pick stuff up. And uh, even though this episode is taking some time already, let's just go ahead and add the score as well. So the score is another special type of effect. So public and static class score extends effect. Public score int score. Oh, and then let's pass in the X and the Y as well, where we should spawn the score. 
int x int y. So super x y. And then let's go and draw out the numbers file because that's where the scores are located. And uh, it looks like we don't have a reader for that one. So let's go ahead and make that. So that's this here. And they're not any assets yet either, I think. So let's add those as well. Numbers, numbers, read numbers. Get number. Int index. Numbers get index. All right, and then we need. Let's see, we had read border. And here we'll do read numbers. And numbers is numbers.dn1, right? Let's go ahead and check it out. Numbers, yeah. And they should not be opaque. They should be transparent. All right, and let's print out these numbers. And uh, yeah, we did this way back in episode one. And now is the time that we're going to need them. <coughs> Uh, yep, this doesn't compile, and uh, index y, time to live, let's also do two seconds. Let's exit here. Okay, so we got the numbers. All right, so we have 100 points. 100 is index 0. All right, so let's go and add this render method and then let's go and say renderer draw tile assets get number tile index plus frame percent two because these numbers are flashing. And then of course we need X and Y. And uh, yep, yeah, we need to increment the frame here still. So that's the score. So this will add us 100. So uh, let's see. So tile index equals switch on score. Case 100 is tile index 0. Then we have 200. And that is tile two. And then we have 500, so zero, one, two, three, four is 500. And then we have six for a thousand, then two and then five, two thousand, five thousand, two, six, two, four, six, eight, 10 for 5,000, and then we have 10,000. It's 12, and default, uh, let's just have minus one and let's crash the game. Should, uh, should we pass in an invalid score? All right, so let's go for the football, for example. So when we pick stuff up, we say state increase score by 100, and then we can say state.getFX add new score x, y, 100. Oh, that's the wrong main class. Let's run Duke. Now when we pick up a football, or any other item, I think, we should see some score floaters. All right, so now this should just float up. So here in the renderer, we can just say y equals for 
uh, y minus four, something like that. Let's see how fast they fly up. This might be a bit too fast here. Yep. Yeah. So minus two. I think one pixel per frame is too slow. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm liking it. So we, we have to add, of course, these floaters to all the scores. But um, and we can't do it blindly to each time we score points, because sometimes when you score 100 points, you don't see the score floaters. So they are pretty conditional. But um, yeah, at least we have the possibility to do so now. So that's pretty cool. So each of these items, uh, as long as they score 100 points, they'll show the 100 point score floater. And uh, yeah, we got the particles in place and all the other nice things, the dust clouds and the sparks. Oh, I'm shooting straight through the level here. So that uh, collision detection for the bolts still needs some work, unfortunately. But uh, I'm liking it where we are right now with the game. So uh, I think next episode we can start adding some more uh, more enemies again to the game. Uh, these special effects really make things uh, cool and nice. So yeah, I want to thank you very much for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments down below. Um, if you like the series so far, then please consider dropping a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.